yeah, so let's get started. Uh, welcome. Um, my name is Jukka Zitting. Uh, I work for Day Software. Um, we're a Swiss uh, content management vendor. Uh, we do uh, web content management and all sorts of other content management stuff um, and work quite a bit of with Apache technologies. Um, and then one of the key tenets of, of our products is that they're based on a hierarchical uh, model of content. I'm going to talk a little bit about it today. Basically about putting trees into the clouds. Um, so what we're going to do here, um, basically we'll do uh, two parts. Uh, first part about, about the, the ideas and, and, and what is hierarchy and where it's being used. Um, and, 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 and what's the good thing about the hierarchy and then what's the bad thing about hierarchy. Um, basically to get you to um, uh, see, see the trade-offs of, of, of where it's uh, useful and where it's not. Uh, and the second part, we we do a kind of a short case study on on on, uh, on on the Java content repository standard. That's kind of a particular kind of a modern uh, example of a hierarchical database. Um, and and uh, Jackrabbit and Sling projects that are kind of uh, Jackrabbit is a reference implementation of JCR, and Sling is a web framework built on top of that, based on the kind of hierarchical content model. And then finally, I'll, I'll go through some of the kind of lessons uh, we've learned in, in, in using this model for, for storing data and content and, and kind of where it's good at, where it's not so good at, and, and, and so on. Uh, if you have any questions and comments, please, please uh, raise them at any point. Um, let's see if we have, have some time at the end to, to do more, more of the questions. But if something comes up right away, then feel free to raise your hand and I'll, I'll try to address it. So. Um, What's a hierarchy? You've all seen these graphs, um, uh, probably um, at one point or another. Basics, um, it's a way of storing records um, uh, where basically you have a single constraint that every record except the root has a parent record and that there are no cycles in the parent uh, relationships. Basically, you can't have a parent who's, who's the child um, of its child. So, um, so, so that's a tree, um, and basically, uh, that's um, the main form of referential integrity that a, a tree or a hierarchical database uh, supports. Um, quite a few of of, of uh, hierarchical models support only that as a kind of form of of references that are really um, uh, kind of enforced by the system. <coughs> Another thing that, that's fairly typical of, of hierarchical models, it's not in every one of them, but in quite a few of them, is that you have a name uh, for, for each record. Um, basically, uh, the name uh, is, is, is associated, basically it identifies the record within its parent. Um, there are cases where the record isn't unique. Uh, for example, in XML, you can have multiple um, elements with the same name within the same single uh, parent element. Uh, DNS, you can have multiple records for the same uh, DNS entry and so on. Um, but um, regardless of that, the path of an element is a very, or a path of a record is a very good way of identifying it. Uh, either it identifies a single record or then it identifies a set of records. Um <coughs> and typically uh, the path uh, within a hierarchical database is the fastest way of accessing a record. It's actually blazingly fast for, for, for many cases and many implementations. Um <coughs> Another important thing about hierarchical uh, databases is that there are actually two hierarchies to keep in mind. Um, one is the hierarchy of records, uh, basically what you'd see in a, in a file system, files and folders and so on. And another thing is that, that there may be a type hierarchy. Basically, you can have a record of this type, uh, but then it may be a subtype of something else. And, and kind of uh, how these um, hierarchies interrelate is, is, is a source of quite a lot of flexibility because you can basically, here in, um, in my example, I've tried to kind of color code different types of records here. And you can mi mix and match, like, like put a child of this type into below this record and then child of that type uh, under another record and so on and then and, and combine things in, in new and novel ways. For example, um, 
the content management system we do, we have um, kind of uh, content type for pages and, 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 and paragraphs within a page and, and comments and, and, and all sorts of stuff, normal files and so on. And you can just mix and match those so you can, for example, take a, a, a page and put a um, uh, add comments to it and for each comment you may want to add uh, uh, image to it or something like that. And you can just combine them together um, and it will all work together fairly nicely. The nice parts about this model is that it, it's, it's fairly natural. There are lots and lots of lots of hierarchies uh, that everyone knows about. You don't need to tell people really kind of how this thing is modeled because oh, it, it's fairly obvious in most cases. And it also maps very well to many domains. Um <coughs> So, so people have an uh, easy time to, to understand it. Um, uh, it's also kind of a very important uh, feature of, of the model is that it, it's got this fractal nature that it's self-similar at all the levels. So you can take kind of the lowest level of, of, of your, your data structure and actually add all sorts of stuff under it. And it, it'll look lo just like uh, what it looked like when you started from the root. So you can apply your algorithms uh, recursively at, at each level, and you can do stuff like like <coughs> like, like map reduce and in a little bit some similar way uh, as CouchDB is doing with its kind of internal B3 hierarchy. In this case, the tree is just kind of explicit, and you can control it. <coughs> <coughs> also, um, it's fairly scalable as a model. Um, basically, you have an inherent kind of you can take this part of the system and, and store it somewhere else um, and this part of the system store it there um, you can process different branches uh, in parallel without kind of worrying about those those processings uh, uh, con conflicting even if they're updating the data <coughs> concurrently and so on so it's 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 fairly nice um, and it's amazingly efficient for certain types of, of, of accesses. Basically, whenever you access the system through the path of a node, um, <coughs> you can do so at, at, at blazing speed. Um, also, you can do stuff like, like um, kind of a join, basically listing all the children of this node or, or the entire subtree within below this node uh, very efficiently. And that, that's a feature that... that um, that pretty much uh, none of the other uh, systems can do um, uh, uh, at, at, at any kind of um, performance that's that comparable. For example, here's, here's uh, the image shows, shows uh, kind of a non-typical uh, example of where trees are being used. This is a uh, space partitioning uh, example. We're using an uh, octal uh, tree model to partition the space to see what's inside this three-dimensional space and you can very kind of efficiently see that okay I take just cut this part of the space and see what's inside it and apply a uh, operation on just this part and, and it works very very efficiently <coughs> however there are drawbacks to this model too um, as I said um, you typically have only one form of references or kind of uh, into record relationships that that's really well supported by the system and that's uh, the parent child relationship other forms of kind of this record is related to this other record is, is either a kind of a soft reference that may work or may not work and it's probably not that efficient <coughs> or there are some other solutions basically if you need them then you go into graph databases <coughs> that that kind of can do that uh, more efficiently but then kind of you, you lose the, the um, self-similar or kind of a uh, recursive um, nature of, of the model, which, which comes with, with uh, some cost in, in, in both performance and, and the uh, complexity of the algorithms you, you will need to use to, 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 to process uh, data within such a model. Uh, a directed acyclic uh, uh, graph is, is a partial solution. Basically, it's a tree where you can kind of merge branches uh, assuming that, that none of the branches goes back up and then forms a cycle in, in, in the graph. So 
that model uh, maintains some of the kind of good parts um, of, of, uh, of a pure uh, tree model, um, but still allows a little bit more flexibility in how how um <coughs> how you can uh, relate different records together. Another problem uh, that that many, uh, not all, but many uh, hierarchical uh, databases face is is how to handle very flat data, basically uh, data that doesn't have an inherent hierarchical structure. Exam uh, good examples are kind of uh, anything that, that's uh, time-based, basically a chronological sequence of, of events, uh, be it blog posts or tweets or whatever, um, or that are sets uh, with no inherent uh, structure, uh, like, like wiki pages or a set of user accounts or, or all sorts of sta uh, stuff like that. Basically, if you have uh, such data sets that go beyond, say, thousands um, of, of, of uh, records, then, then many of the current hierarchical um, databases or Im implementations uh, have trouble um, dealing with that. So the solution uh, typically is to add some form of artificial hierarchy to that. For example, divide the elements by, by um, by date to to different um, uh, subtrees, or or use something like um, content hash to to divide <coughs> divide the content, uh, basically partition the content to different parts of the tree. This is essentially what many of the the um, the uh, kind of tree um, storage algorithms do internally. It, you just don't see it happening. For example, a B tree is an example of of that in practice. Uh, another drawback is that there aren't really kind of generic standards for, for, for tree hierarchies. There are standards, um, but they're typically tied to a single uh, domain or a sim single kind of uh, system, or then they are otherwise kind of limited. Uh, for example, JCR that we're, uh, we'll be discussing later on is, is, is somewhat limited to the, to the Java platform. So, um, so there aren't really kind of very generic solutions available that you could use. Um, another thing is that, that even though it, it's probably one of the simplest uh, forms of structure that you can enforce on your, your data or your content, it's still a little bit of effort uh, to maintain such structures. Uh, for example, if you have a document database, you can just, as long as you can do something as, as a document, you can just just throw it in. Uh, with the tree model, you actually have to think a little bit about where in the tree you're going to put it and also what you're going to name your, your data. And, and, and coming up with good names for, for data is actually surprisingly hard for, for many cases. Um, and, and, and I'll show you a couple of examples of, of how different systems approach that problem. Also kind of... Um, you probably all know kind of the difficulty of maintaining a file system in order in, in kind of a reasonable um, uh <coughs> organization. That's the similar case you're going to end up with with a hierarchical database. You need to put some effort into maintaining it so that you can reap the the biggest benefits from from uh, from the storage model. So uh, let's go through a couple of examples that are in use today. Um, uh, so, basically, the, the, the biggest um, hierarchical database that each of us uses every day we're dealing with any sort of a computer is the file system. Uh, it's been around for ages, um, uh, and it's, it's, it's everywhere. Um, it's a very limited um, form of a database. It only has two types of records. Uh, typically, you have files and you have folders or directories. Uh, there are some exceptions like, like block devices and stuff like that, um, or, or the kind of uh, prox file system in, 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 in Linux and, and, and other, other Unix systems. Um, but basically, um, the main thing is, is just a file, uh, and that's just a stream of bytes with no internal structure and, and, and uh, no support for, for fine-grained properties like like how what if I want to store uh, a sequence of numbers within a file system that would be a little bit difficult 
that said, it's it's amazingly well optimized for many use cases that we do with computers. Um, and and, and uh, if you're talking about performance optimization in database systems, basically file system is as good as you can go. Um, there are also some some features that that typically you can find in a file system that that many other databases don't do or don't do that well. Um, access controls is one. It's it's built in virtually to all modern file systems, and it's very very efficient, um, which is often a problem with with um, database systems. As soon as you add access controls, you're you're kind of losing performance. Uh, here, the hierarchical model helps because you can basically evaluate uh, your your um, access controls as you traverse the tree, and so basically for for um, for any given record, you only need to evaluate a couple of, of, of access controls. And still you have this kind of global control over your data, which is really nice. <coughs> However, a big problem with many file systems is there is no search. Um, there are tools that add search on top of a file system, and some of them are really good, but, but none of them is really, really integrated into the system itself. Um, so, so that's uh, a big limitation of, of what the file system can do. Also, uh, file systems traditionally aren't uh, that well suited for distributed use. Uh, you have some kind of network file system and stuff like that that work reasonably well uh, for many use cases, for some not that well, but, um, but mostly they work. But for true distributed use, um, you need systems like uh, Hadoop FS, uh, or, or, or stuff like that, and they come with a number of restrictions. Um, basically, either it's performance or, or it's kind of the type of files that you can um, reasonably handle or something like that. Or it's locking or concurrent access or whatever. So yeah, uh, that's about uh, files. And another kind of very, very um, widely used and a very successful hierarchical system is, is the domain name system. It's globally distributed. It's an eventually consistent database. Uh, it's got a number of different uh, independent implementations that all work together seamlessly. And it's been in production since 83. I guess we have some people here who've been born around that time. So, um, so it, it's an amazing system. Um, it's got a protocol for querying, for updating records, and it's all done over, over the network. Um, unfortunately, it's very, very domain specific. Um, um, and and it's, it's, it's kind of a very restricted uh, database in a way. Um, some other uh, uh, features of it is that, that you can have, as mentioned earlier, you can have multiple records with the same name and you just get a <coughs> basically use a, use a type attribute when, when requesting data from the database to get kind of, I want a record of this type with this name, mm, and then you'll get it. Um, there are a number of record types available. They're basically uh, standardized uh, for the most part, um, but um, you can actually store a surprising variety of, of different kinds of data within a DNS system. Um, <coughs> And also, um, there have been a number of security issues uh, in, in, in DNS, um, but surprisingly, that hasn't done very much to kind of hinder its use. Uh, so so um, perhaps that, that's a lesson to learn, that, that you can, you can uh, if, if the system is good otherwise, then you can kind of work within the constraints of, of not that perfect security. Um, LDAP, um, another system uh, that's not as widely uh, used as DNS and uh, not as successful. It's, it's got a couple of, of interesting features like, like using type uh, attributes as, as part of the, the path and the name of, of things. Um, it's got schemas. Um, it's got references across uh, different records, even though that's a little bit limited in, 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 in expressiveness. Um, it's got a pretty good search, um, 
uh, though there are limitations on what you can do with, with LDAP search. Uh, but for the stuff it does, it's, it's very efficient and very, very well, uh, kind of powerful. Um, it can also do fine-grained data of, of, of a variety, variety of different types. And, and it's very well supported. Most of the implementations of LDAP support are uh, replication and di distributed use, even for, for, for updating the data. <coughs> XML databases. Um, they were cool some time ago. No, now not so much. But there are some examples to learn from them. Um, basically, they did text very, very well, binary not that well. They had really great um, kind of theoretically great um, uh, search and query capabilities. Um, in practice, um, the implementations were, were suboptimal, to say the least. Um, and you could do type constraints on, on an XML database in, in various different ways. Uh, currently, what's what remains of XML databases is basically extensions for SQL and, and storing an XML document within an SQL database and then accessing it through a kind of a hybrid SQL XPath this way. Not that nice, but uh, kind of an experiment on, 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 on what you could do and what you'd end up if you did that. Uh, WebDAV um, is an interesting thing. Um, basically, HTTP and the whole URL space is inherently uh, hierarchical. You have slashes and you have names and then the path within the URL and it's based on DNS on the other side. So um, basically you have this huge space that's, uh, while you can store kind of a flat uh <coughs> data models in it, the inherent structure of the URL space is hierarchical. And WebDAV takes uh, advantage of that fact by layering the concepts of, of uh, collections on top of the resource model of, of HTTP. Uh, basically, you can you can ask for all the child resources of this resource. You can also add new collections and add new resources there. Um, also, it adds uh, a form of properties. Basically, a resource doesn't need to be just a blob of, of, of a certain type. You can also add kind of finely grained properties to resources. Um, and you have a way of searching for that information and retrieving just, just uh, specific parts of the information through a through, uh, fairly complex XML-based query thing um, with a custom um, custom HTTP met method uh, called PropFind, which is a perhaps a little bit heavyweight for, for many things that you could uh, typically do with just the normal HTTP GET. Um, but there are certain cases where you kind of, the limitations of the URL length of, for example, in GET is, is not enough. Um, for for some of the queries you you may want to do, there's also a DAV extension called Dazzl uh, that extends uh, this to 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 stuff like full text search and all sorts of search features <coughs> that you can run on top of WebDAV. Um, the big problem though with WebDAV is is that that the implementations are really fragmented. Um, basically. Um, Everyone that does WebDAV is, is kind of bound, okay, WebDAV, you need to do a remote file system with that. And it's actually kind of, if you look at the standard itself, it's a hierarchical database, not a file system. Even though you can kind of, both are hierarchical and you can ma model them, kind of map them together. Uh, but basically because uh, the main use case for WebDAV for a long while uh, has been remote file system access, that's what people expect it to do. And then you can f get uh, implementations that are, are pretty much limited uh, to the stuff that you can do with the file system. And also limited to the stuff that you can't do when you're accessing a file system remotely. Like very efficient low-level access to the files, random access and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, it's, it's kind of a... It used to be a kind of a good idea. It didn't work out that well in practice. Uh, some of the systems like Atom Bob um, are nowadays uh, uh, kind of redoing some of the concepts that originally uh, started in, in WebDAV and doing it in a kind of a more narrow scope so that it's more application specific and more um, uh, kind of 
simplified uh, implementation. Um, and finally, uh, talking about databases, you can't avoid relational databases. Um, there's a way to, to or there are actually a number of ways of storing hierarchies within a relational database. Uh, and that's what most people who do hierarchies, basically because there are so many uh, data models that are inherently hierarchical, that people end up doing that in the relational database, and they do that a lot. Um, and there are a couple of ways of doing that. Basically, the simplest way is just to have a uh, foreign key reference from the row um, to its parent row, and so on. Uh, and some other um, more advanced ways of handling that. But it, it's very constrained. You don't have the flexibility of a true uh, kind of hierarchical model. And, and doing uh, kind of a join on kind of give me all the um, records within this substree uh, can be very, very expensive. Or otherwise, if you, if you use the model that makes that uh, cheap, then some other queries become very, very expensive. So basically, it's, it's not that great uh, for hierarchies. So uh, to summarize, uh, basically, um <coughs> there are good things on hierarchies, bad things on hierarchies. Um, Hierarchies are surprisingly widely being used, um, but typically they're all well always like domain-specific cases where it's used. And for those cases, it works great. Um, but what about if there was a generic and feature-rich um, uh, hierarchical database? That's basically what we set out to do uh, when, when um, creating the Java content repository uh, standard. Um, it, it was defined in, in the Java <coughs> Uh, specification process, um, um, uh, community process uh, in, in two versions, 1.0 uh, some five years ago and then 2.0 uh, uh, last year. Basically we defined um, a storage model for content, um, um, a kind of a special uh, form of, of data that kind of can be both structured and unstructured at the same time. So you could store kind of uh, structured data with a specific schema to it and then add unstructured parts uh, within it or, or outside or kind of combine them together. <coughs> and the API itself is, is very, very featured. So you have lots of stuff li like um, pretty well-defined query capabilities. You have versioning. You have ability to observe changes within the repository. Um, you have access controls. Um, all sorts of stuff um, in there. Um <coughs> so it, it's more of a platform for building applications than actually uh, uh, an API for integrating existing um, uh, hierarchical content stores. Jackrabbit um, is the reference implementation um, of, of JCR. Um, basically, Jackrabbit implements all the functionality in JCR, so it's really a feature-rich uh, database. Um, we can do pretty much anything you'd want to do uh, on, on your data um, on a kind of a platform level. Um <coughs> However, that, that kind of feature completeness comes at a price on, on the on, on, on things like scalability and performance. Um, so so kind of if you're looking for a system that, that scales to, to internet scale stuff, Jackrabbit probably isn't for you. Um, but if you're looking for something where you want to, to uh, quickly set up a complex, uh, for example, content management system, um, uh, and don't want to kind of integrate search yourself and don't want to do versioning yourself and stuff like that, then use Jackrabbit and then you have it all for free. <coughs> we also do stuff like, like web dev integration. So if you're looking for a web dev uh, store that you can do as well. Um, for Jackrabbit 3, we're kind of the next version. We're kind of trying to rethink how this kind of feature rich model uh, for storing data hierarchically could be um, implemented in a kind of scalable distributed manner. Um, it's, it's an ongoing research project to do that, um, and we'll see how it turns out. 
We also did something uh, called Apache Sling uh, on top of this model. Basically, what we took was, was uh, take the content hierarchy and map it to a URL space. So basically, whenever um, we have a client requesting a URL, we walk the path and find a resource. Basically, what a normal Apache server does, it walks the file system and finds the file at, at this. Now we have a, a kind of a feature reads and content uh, kind of finely grained um, uh, data store on, uh, uh, below that. So when we find the record, we can take a look at what, what's the type of this record, how it's supposed to be processed and how it's supposed to be rendered or, or modified. And then we can again look at um, basically <coughs> uh, stuff like, like scripts and, and so on what that we also store within the repository with attributes like, okay, uh, if you get a uh, request like this, then run this script and, and, and so on. <coughs> so it's kind of a, a way to, to, to leverage um, the hierarchical model and the advanced um, features you have in a kind of um, uh, finely grained uh, hierarchical content store to, to implement something on top of the web. Um, so you can request JSON uh, representation of, of of a record and, and, and update it through, through normal post stuff and so on. Basically, the idea is that everything within the system is part of this tree. Just like in, in a um, in normal web ap application, say, say in PHP, you'd write it um, and, um <coughs> and, uh, and then put the uh, kind of script files in this directory and, and uh, content in, in, in for example, XML files in this fi directory and so on. Uh, in this case, with Sling, we'll just put them, put them all into the into the repository where we have uh, kind of a much more um <coughs> feature its uh, API for for processing the data. So, um, what we learned from from all this, uh, basically, um, and then some of these things are can very well be applied in other kinds of, of storage model as well is, is that um, the way to to program applications on top of such a platform is, is kind of the easiest way to do that is actually to look at the data first um, kind of put your data in into the uh, repository uh, come up with any structures you have inherently there move them things around and then kind of start grafting functionality on top of that instead of going from your code and writing it and then kind of figuring out what the c uh, data m must look like for my code to look like uh, to work properly. Um, another thing uh, we learned that, that uh, basically you can get amazingly good uh, performance with, with modern hardware uh, and you can scale pretty far, uh, not to internet scale stuff, but still for, for most uh, medium, small companies um you can do amazing stuff with just just one or two servers um so it turns that that um for many cases um having a distributed store is actually uh, more useful um as a way to increase the fault tolerance and and the ability to kind of uh host that uh system on 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 a on a in an environment that you don't directly control and you can't go there and, and switch the uh, thing on and off when you need to. <coughs> uh, another thing is, is, um, is that there are many things where, where being able to, to relate documents to each other is, is very important. And we've actually kind of faced that in a number of places, even with, with the added hierarchy uh, as one form of uh, relationships. We need more. Um, and 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 that's that's probably something that that other kind of NoSQL uh, stores need to do in some way or another. Kind of decide how to best um, relate documents to each other. Uh, in JCR and Jackrabbit, we've implemented that in kind of uh, as a special reference type that makes the store into a kind of a, a, a graph database instead of just a tree. Uh, but uh, in my opinion, that implementation isn't too ideal. And um, then there's the fact that, that many data sets that are important are flat. Uh, so, so that's a big problem for hierarchical stuff. And um, yeah, 
Uh, and the one last word uh, for anyone who's gonna going to implement this stuff, don't forget tool support. It's, it's surprisingly important to, to make it easy to access the data inside your system instead of having to write 100 lines of code to, to access a single record. Uh, that, that's something we learned the hard way. So yeah, I, I, I'm sorry we probably don't have too much time for questions. Um, we're running out of time now. Uh, but uh, if you want to know more or, or kind of have ideas related to this, uh, feel free to, to uh, contact me at any point.